Yo, what is up, guys? It is E. Happy back to work day for most of us. This is going to be the official vent session of the Philadelphia Eagles losing to the Arizona Cardinals. And I cannot wait to bring somebody on that I know always brings the passion, always brings the energy, always brings the excitement, and always brings great. Black Gritty is going to be joining us to talk through it, man. We got to, we got to talk through it. We got to cope with it. We got we got to just let it out, man. Let all the feelings out. BG, what's happening, my dog? I, I don't know if I'm welcome to show my face right now. We down bad, baby. We <laughs> we, we down bad, baby. I, I'm in these streets ducking for coming. So I'm gonna have to do the show like this. You know what I'm saying? I can't I can't put my whole heart into it today. You know what I mean? I'm just, oh my I, man, I yeah, you're breaking my heart. Heart. Let me let me put some head back. Like, <laughs> we down bad, baby. We we down bad. Happy New Year, brother. I, Happy, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you and your family, and, and, and I hope your 2024 brings you more success and happiness than at least the last couple months of 2023 have brought you, my friend. So, two things. I love you so much. I love, I love the too. Philadelphia Eagles so much. I love Philadelphia so much. Yeah. But that's why I'm so upset. That's why my heart's broken. That's why I'm, like, enraged. It's, it's, it's one, I was at Chicken Pete's tonight, bro. And... When we oh, did you see the boys? Game, did you see the boys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we're we're there. There were four people there today. Oh, like God. even Chicky loses money when we don't win. Like uh -huh. nobody comes outside. Nobody does everything. Nobody nobody holds the door for you. Why why? You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's free coffee Tuesday. Ain't nothing free. It it's just it, it's so insane how much this one team controls the emotion and the heart of the city because we care this isn't ohio this isn't san francisco where they're 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 come by night fans and you know there are a lot of rich people with money we bleed green and we live and die by it you were at the game i saw you on tv i was like that's my dog i was like you know we was up 21 to 6 and i'm complaining on the internet and people are like what more do you want them to do and i'm like do you not see it coming yeah that and, and, and and that's the unfortunate part. Listen, I, I, I know how passionate you are about the team and how much you love the team and how much you root, root it. And I think my track record stands for itself. <laughs> At least I hope it would. <laughs> oh, you, yours more than mine. I just wanted to start off with, with the love, you know. But, but, but listen, man, it, it is – you have your head and you have your heart. And, and of course, the reason why free coffees and Wawa aren't doing a trick and nobody's saying good morning or happy new year to each other – or holding the door for each other is because this the, the, the Philadelphia Eagles physically and emotionally, spiritually at times affect the way our lives we lead our lives. You know, it it, it affects us during a during a victory Monday. You know, here an ice cream victory. There's nothing like it, dude. It's just uplifting. Everybody's nicer. You let people in in traffic. You know, what I mean, you wave to people. You say good morning when the Eagles lose. And especially the way that they're losing, which I know we're going to touch on in a moment. There's a difference between losing and the way you lose. When yeah. the Eagles lose, man, that Monday afterwards or that, two, you know, if it's a primetime game, that Tuesday afterwards, it's just, it's miserable. And it sticks with us like, like, like shit, like we stepped in dog shit. You can smell it <laughs> all day. You might like forget it's there and then all of a sudden you catch a whiff of it. And it's like, my God, this again? Like, what's going on? So, all right, all right. So let's, let's, because let's, we're, we're going to have to have some sort of structure to this thing. Because I know you and I could just go on and on and on and complain and buckle up. We're in it for, uh, however, you know, long it takes. <laughs> however long it takes for us to feel at least this much better. Oh, before, before you start, I will say this. I called in. I, I was let off on Ike's show today. And I did a misery. I heard. I, I didn't hear. The, I didn't hear the call, but I heard somebody reference the. Yeah, and I, I did. I tried as long as I could because that's just how. Because you're right. Like, just hearing those things and those tropes and the things that we do, they're rituals. And when we lose, it takes the sail out of our wings, bro. For real, for real. So, get, give me some structure. Okay. So there's there's a lot of thoughts. There's a lot, a lot of theories. There's a lot of finger pointing, and you're not hearing much coming out of the team because Nick Sirianni's up there in his press conference saying he's got to do a better job. A.J. Brown's not talking. 
talking to the media, which is fine. We'll get there. Um, where, in your opinion, because people blame the coaches, they blame the players, they blame the above, they blame this. For you, and I know there's multiple things. You can't just hinge it on one thing. But from one to three, where did it go wrong? for this team i hate when someone says that uh they got the blueprint for you and they gave out the blueprint and you know you lose a game but there's something too when someone plays their super bowl against you the cardinals came out and and took this game at the end because gannon all week had this team hyped and fighting for him that it was his super bowl the yeah. 49ers came against us because it was their Super Bowl. And, I, and I'm not talking backwards or, or, or talking back. Like, you know, I, I make videos for every every game. I didn't make a video for the Cardinals because I knew it was a trap game and anything I would have said would have just blew up in my face. I could feel it in my heart that this man's over here telling them they did me wrong. They talked about me. Philadelphia's grimy. And he had all those secondary guys, rookie guys, hyped up Will in the Brumple wall for him. And Nick was at the I'm trying to hold this shit together. Mm. I'm trying to keep this thing afloat. And he wasn't focused on the, hey, we really got to get this guy. Like, we got to get this guy. Because we had so much turmoil. So, for me, it starts with the coaching. You downgrade, change the defensive coordinator. When you don't realize, okay, we don't have the horses. The coordinator is not the issue at, in this point. Because no coordinator is going to come in and help you, as you can see. And when you want to say pencil boy, which is who I call him because I don't like anybody from the Belichick Creed. That's just a personal thing for me. But he couldn't do anything with the horse. We have injuries. So firing a man who kept Miami down to 17 points and couldn't stop the 49ers and the Cowboys on a hot streak, now look at us. So there's turmoil. And now you got some defensive guys who are like, I like the side. Oh, I don't like uh, Patricia. Hassan Reddick dropped back seven times yesterday more than he's ever dropped back as an eagle and that was his problem in arizona when he kept dropping him back he's like i don't play well in this style of football it's not good for me then you go to the offense nick says it's his offense he wants explosives he's not making any changes you started that game with a shut up philadelphia fans opening drive run the ball run the ball because they're yelling it and then you throw a ball into the flat to a running back which is going nowhere yeah i want you to run the ball with power I want you to throw the ball on the flat when you've got go routes and the guy's open for a 15 Clear it out. Yeah. Not to pander to everybody yelling at you when you feel like you've got to do it. So for me, it starts with coaching, players, and then I, I, I'll put it on just everybody's heart and emotion. Yeah. Starts with coaching. I, I, I'll agree. I'll, I'll rank them, and, and, I, and I think the, my rankings are going to be very similar to yours. First of all, it's coaching. I know a lot of people down on Nick Sirianni. Ultimately, everything that happens on the field and with the team falls under the umbrella of Nick Sirianni. However, I'm looking at the coordinators because I can't help but notice that in a lot of these games, and I, I've said this in the park, I, I can't tell you how many people in the park, like, you know, I'm doing my normal tailgate route. I'm, I'm hitting up my normal spots. Uh, the Jersey Joe and the LFG crew, and then we're going to the Pilaf Pies. I mean, everywhere. Yeah. Eve, what, Eve, what the hell is going on? And one thing I, I'd say to anybody that listen that would listen, if you take a look at the, the first 15 scripted plays, which are a collaborative effort of the entire offensive staff, normally those first 15 plays, we're doing pretty. I mean, look at the San Francisco 49ers game. We drove it right down the field. Now, I granted. What? Twice. Twice. Kick field goals instead of scoring touchdowns, which didn't help us out. But nevertheless, you can see evidence that the Eagles offense is going to be able to move the ball. Yes. The first two drives against Brock Purdy or defensively had him rattled. And then it's almost like after the first, and especially on offense, after the first 15 scripted plays are done, Brian Johnson is just throwing darts at a play chart. And he doesn't know. He 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 he, 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 he just he doesn't know. He's, he just he, not to cut you off. He's not throwing darts. It's screen, bubble screen, QB sneak, shot deep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those are those are his four go-to plays. When he gets rattled, like you're yeah. right. Like he, he's throwing that one that those certain plays that he just does, like deer in headlights. Yeah, 
and everybody goes to their their go-to script right it's like i i don't know it, 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 it's like when i used to dj right i have my set i know what's gonna work i i you know i got the wedding reception all-star set right so i i can always go back to the well and i know what's gonna work he Papa, goes back to the Papa. well what's that Papa. Hot, hot, hot in here, you know, the way it's, it's a wedding reception classic, yep, right? Yep. So it's almost like he goes to the well and he goes back to what he's comfortable with. The problem is what he's comfortable with doesn't work. What he's comfortable with doesn't work and the defense knows it's coming. This offense has completely relied too heavily on you. You've got playmakers, just run the play that we're running. Let the playmakers go make a play. They very rarely scheme guys open. There was a play in that game where I think it was a fake to the left, like a play action pass, and then Dallas got, they cleared everything out. Dallas Goddard went to the right, and they threw the ball to him. It was a design play to Dallas Goddard, and they schemed the play to fake everyone out to ensure that he was open. That's scheming guys open. This offense doesn't scheme people open. They just, Jalen, you drop back. Here are the routes. You trust your playmakers to make a play. And here's the problem. Defenses are just feeding on that. Defenses are just feeding on that. So it's, it's, it's the, the coaching, which I know falls under the Nick Sirianni umbrella, but I really think it's more in the coordinator's hands. And this will circle back around to something at the end. The second is the players. Offensively, we're the same team. You can't convince me. All right, you take out Sayamalo, you plug in Jurgens. Six to one, half dozen of the other. The offense is equipped, equipped fully. The shelf you is stocked. You take out Miles Sanders, you put in Swift. Six to one, half dozen of the other. I'm fine with it. So offensively, th this team is struggling. It's the same offensive players. Where, I, but again, where do you point it to? Now, where I will say players defensively, linebackers and safeties, secondaries getting old. It, it, they're too slow. They're too slow on defense. They're just flat out too slow. And and speed kills. Defensive line isn't getting home. Linebackers are too slow. Safeties are too slow. They're chewing up the middle of the field. So um, um, a commenter said earlier, we need better cornerbacks. Let me tell you something. Cornerbacks aren't really an issue because everybody's killing us over the middle. Our linebackers are injured, and we've got guys off a of practice squad and guys that we cut that wouldn't be on the team. So our linebackers is where everyone destroys us, and then they get to take a shot deep, and you know you pick on a Bradbury here and there down the field. But for the most part, we don't value linebackers, and they have we have been getting killed and crushed over the middle. And the second thing I'll say about that is we had a guy who came into this practice, was here for 10 days, and said, I want to be a plumber. I'd rather be a plumber then go and play defense for the Philadelphia Eagles. And yeah. now he is on the Pittsburgh Steelers yeah. rocking and rolling and making plays every single week. What did he see when he was here that made him want to go plunge toilets to now he's a star and a great pickup for the Steelers? A, a, a defensive-minded coach, Tomlin is one of the great geniuses of our lifetime on defense. I do get that. But from retirement to yeah. What's going on? What did he see? What? Uh, I, 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 I don't know. So we got, so we got the coaches. Yep. We've got the players. Yep. For the lack of talent, especially on defense. And then thirdly, and this is where it's all going to circle back, the tackling. Like, I've just never seen a team that can't tackle. Now, here, here's where I'll tie it all together. You and I are sitting here trying to figure all this shit out, right? Figure out why the Philadelphia Eagles are struggling. We've known this shit since training camp. Yep. We know that we had two rookie coordinators. Like, Gannon screwed us. He hemmed and hawed about going to Arizona. We missed our opportunity at Vic Fangio, okay? So that was the first thing. We knew we had linebackers walking in free agency, and we, we, we bet the farm on the Kobe Dean maybe staying healthy and being the guy. And that was a complete disaster. CJ, GJ going to the Lions. Okay, we, we banked on, you know, Chalk Dog, Milk Missile, Reed Blankenship, whatever you want to, you know. Chalk Dog. Chalk Dog. And, and, and now we got Sidney Brown starting. We knew that the linebackers and the secondary, getting a little older, but mainly the safeties were going to be an issue. And then thirdly, 
You can tell me these light practices are keeping guys from being injured. And yes, that stay true for the Super Bowl year. Dudes are injured all the time on this team right now. And they kept it light. You don't practice tackling. You become a bad tackling team. Ta-da! Like, like it's, just, it's, it's just we cannot be this far along in the season. It is now 2024 and still be talking about not playing up to the standard fundamentals going back to the back to the drawing board we, we that's not a recipe for success so everything that this team is struggling with we knew about in training camp is just now rearing its ugly head so two things one there's a 49er guy in the comments talking lovely trash which i'll accept right now but you just you got rocked by the ravens bro and anything you say subsequently to you beating yourself or whatever is clown music and you're embarrassing yourself as a sports fan all fandom aside you got rocked you guys rocked us i got rocked by the cowboys but at least i split with the cowboys but the the ravens went in there and took your heart period point blank brock Purdy was scared to death and he's so fragile they wouldn't even let him back in the game yet old mcdonald for had a farm out there that's that. I'm not going to acknowledge you anymore, but I'm just going to let you know that. Don't be over here with these fans trying to tell them stuff. Now, somebody else made another comment. I don't, don't think I'm not watching. I'm listening. I can watch. Listen. Somebody said expectations. After the Super Bowl, if we were seven and eight or seven and six or nine and, and four, and we were backing our way into the playoffs, scrapping our way in after a Super Bowl loss, which is so hard to do to even get back to the playoffs after losing a Super Bowl, because everybody loses coordinators, you lose players. We would be ecstatic if we weren't overachieving. But the overachieving and then coming down to earth this late with so many injuries and coaching issues, it's hard to fix it. So it hurts more. Yeah. It makes you feel worse about everything yeah. because we're still 11 and 5. We could possibly be at 12 and 5. At the beginning of the year, you would say, oh, that sounds like a great season. The problem is we're looking at it and we're living through it and we know how the losses look that's why when people say root for the cowboys are you insane i would never root for the cowboys i mean even though i like the 49ers i'm not rooting for them to beat each other i i, I want to tie or best man win whatever i'm not rooting for you because yeah. guess what you root up, some fans spend all week rooting for the cowboys and then we lose that how you look you should root for the lions if you're rooting for the lions they wouldn't go it's dumb focus on what you care about what you yeah. control so the expectations that someone brought up is the bigger thing, too, about how we as fans feel, and maybe even the players. The players expected themselves to go back to the Super Bowl. They expected a Super Bowl run, and they were achieving that. And to have it crushed is making the infighting, the, the not trusting coaches, the – right? And, and listen, I, I completely agree with you as far as the expectations, and, and, that, and that's with the fans. But I, I really think the expectations with the players, like even when they're winning, even when they would eke out those wins, did the team ever really seem like they were having fun? Like Sirianni's five core concepts, and I'll try to rattle them off. I'm going to forget a couple. Is is compete, connect, uh, football IQ. What 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 are some of the other ones? Connect, connect, compete, football IQ, accountability, accountability, accountability. There's, execution. there's one more that I'm forgetting. Is it execution? Nah, somebody's going to put it in the comments. Nevertheless, what are, what are they doing well right now? Are they connecting well? Not really. Are they are are are, are they are they taking accountability? I I guess I guess. But how many times can you hear I got to do a better job or I got to put I got to make the plays and and, and just the rhetoric you know kind of coach speak? Are, 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 so they're not connecting. Accountability. Okay, I'll give them a a, a, a B on. Football IQ? What part of football IQ says that Jalen Hurts should stay in bounds and, 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 and almost dodge? Thank God there was a penalty on that play. What part of football IQ says Brian Johnson's got to call two quarterback draws and a, and a, and a screenplay that, to a uh, running back? Which, by the way, football you can't use football IQ in one sentence and then scheme up Smitty who I am five foot six and I and I weigh more than that dude to blocking being the lead blocker on that sort of play. They ran it once against like I, I think it was Buffalo, where Smitty was blocking. Dallas Goddard got blown up on the play, almost picked off. I turned to my brother and I said, What kind of asshole schemes up or draws up Smitty as the lead blocker on that? And they did it again. And it got Smitty hurt. 
And every time someone says that to me, it makes me cringe. It almost makes me sick because why are you doing that? Why is that a thing? It, it, should, it should be pulled out of the playbook entirely because it's just embarrassing to watch. And to someone in the comments again, yes, the only thing we got going on right now, baby, is special teams. And I'm a man enough to admit that's the one coach I want to fire last year. I didn't even, I, I'm like, they gave him an extension? I'm like, come on, baby. But guess what? He turned it around. Covey turned it around. And and that, that's the only shot and bone we got. Uh, uh, Mr. Tripod himself, Jake Elliott, can kick from the moon. That's that's about as, as long as we can get down there and push put and kick field goals, we can score on anybody. So you're right. We're not doing the things that are a staple for the team so we don't have an identity. And then when you're up 21 to six and you can't lean on something, you flounder and you have a coach that's calling plays that don't make sense. Or like you said, he's throwing darts to the board. He's got something in his bag. I, I also, because we, we do random a lot of things, you said something earlier that made me think, do you think it was an accident that he kicked that onside kick that late? I think it was like, the dude from the matrix because he's like hey if we get the onside great if we don't their clock management hasn't been good they'll probably score really quick and give us the ball back and have an opportunity and then on third we ended up not getting a score and penalizing ourselves and going backwards so it was like wow this dude has like i don't want to give him all the credit in the world because he's again and i don't like him but that was just like an ingenious play with five minutes left to give that short field be like hey that we can't stop them, they can't stop us, but let's get the ball. I feel like he wanted to have the ball, the last shot, the ball, to either tie it or, or go for two or whatever because there was no stopping us. He had a strategy. Gannon must have read the script because, like, he knew how it was going to end because I remember looking at that onside kick and being like, man, that's ballsy. Yeah. That's, that's kind of ballsy in that spot. You'd, you'd think you'd kick it deep and kind of try to let your defense get a stop, and he was like, nah, we're just going to – we know what's going to happen. We got him. You know, you, you know what I mean? Like that, that, that's either coaching stupidity or uh, supreme confidence in the fact that you know what you're doing. And from a three-win team, like that kind of supreme confidence that like, listen, I, I know what they're going to do. So, and I know how they're going to F this So three-win team that beat the Cowboys, which everybody thought was crazy when I said that was going to happen. I'm like, this guy's seen the Cowboys four games now. He yeah. knows how the Cowboys operate. It's almost like a divisional game for him in his mind, and he's a defensive guy. He knows how to play them and slow them down. He, he took Michael Parsons out of the game, which is his, their game record. So then when he comes against us, I thought to myself, one of two things is going to happen. Nick's going to know everything that this guy likes to do because you are my coordinator. I know what you like to do. I'm going to destroy you. Yeah. Or Gannon's going to be like, I know what you run. I'm going to kill you. And it seemed like they had the answers, and they were hurting themselves. The, they they look like us. They went down the field twice and only had six points, but they walked down the field on us. And, you know, Sidney Brown, that was great. That was a bad play on them. And he capitalized. He ran it back. He deserved all the credit in the world for that. But they were still walking down the field on us. Couldn't stop. So when I'm telling somebody, I'm like, it doesn't feel right. And they get the right. ball back. So we started taking the ball first, and now we screwed ourselves with that two times. Right. Letting teams get a chance to come back and get close from the score. So, oh, by the way, in the comments, we said we love this team. We bleed green. We die in the hurt inside right now. Uh, None of us. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and listen, that that that's always that's that's always going to happen when the team is struggling. You're allowed to bitch. It doesn't mean that you've given up or that you don't love the team or that you're not supporting the team. Because I promise you, I'm there every game. <laughs> I got and listen. I'll be I'll be there even though they're thinking about resting starters, and I'm confident they're going to be. Because if they weren't going to rest starters, Nick would have just said we're not yeah. resting starters. What, what do you so think about that? Should they rest the starters or should they play everybody? Rest, rest. Y'all y'all deserve y'all deserve a break. Listen, just take the day off. Every once in a while, you just got to send your employee home and just say they're going to be on the sidelines, but just. Take the day off. And, and, that, okay? and that's for somebody who spent money to go travel and go do that. I feel the exact same way for two reasons. One, I don't trust MetLife at all. I would never want any of my players to play there regardless. Right. So the last game of the season going into the playoffs where we've had a couple of rocky losses, I don't need them fighting for their lives to make up for a couple of bad games on that field. Yeah. It's just trash. So yeah. I want them rested too. Uh, mental health break. Go a little harder in practices, 
you know, throwing some new schemes. Because you're right, we don't scheme up things on no. offense. No, it's just we like, don't scheme we're people better than you, so we're going to do it. Well, yeah. the league is caught up to that. And, 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 they, and they have. And I feel like the book's out. When, when, when Bosa says, yo, there's a script to beating the Eagles. Like, like the, 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 there's a script out there. I feel, like, I, I, I feel like it has to do with there's not a whole lot of offensive creativity. And if you can stop there, if you can take away what they do best, which is down the field shots, too deep safety, bring the blitz, roll Jalen out of the pocket. Because you've seen them under more pressure this year, even though the offensive line is playing well. You've seen them under, under more pressure. And that's what inhibits his vision. That, that's the other thing about the – you know, it's so, it, 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 it's, it's so funny. I noticed against the Bills – I'm sitting there, and that was the game that Jalen was doing a lot of this, yeah. doing a lot of directing. And I'm watching the receivers, and the receivers, even though Jalen's under pressure, are not coming back to the ball. And I'm just saying to myself, listen, every receiver, we've got two of the best, we've got the best wide receiver tandem, one of the best wide receiver tandems in the NFL. Mm -hmm. I refuse to believe that these guys aren't coached up enough or talented enough to understand the fact that when the quarterback is under pressure, that they need to come back for the ball, right? We've seen time and time again from other players on other teams. And then somebody else pointed out, like one of those pro, you know, maybe it was Baldy, some, you know, these routes are taking way too long to develop. And so I watched it again. And you see Jalen pointing and this, the receivers aren't even done with their route. That's why they're not open. They're not, they can't, they can't come back for the ball because they're not even done running their assignment. So you bring pressure on Jalen. These long developing class plays simply won't develop. And Jalen's going to either be forced into a mistake, which he's been making. He's going to hold on to the ball, which he's been doing, or it's going to limit the, the, it's going to limit the ability for him to see the, the entire field because he's already rolling out the one side. So uh, in the comments, yes, we do need a bad. We need, we need a George W. bad. We need a win bad. Uh, your point to that, next 10 stats. If your wide receiver lines up on the right, he runs a straight route or he has a breakout to the right. If he lines up on the left, he has a straight route or he runs out to the left. Your tight end always runs out to the side that he's on right or left. 90% of the plays are like that. There's no CD lamb, line him up in the slot, drag him across the center, drag him across the middle. Like the amount of plays that are plays across the middle are three and four a game. And you usually see them early as like a starter play to get AJ involved where he could break a run. I don't know why they disappear, but the, the next gen stats show that if you line up on the right, you're running to the right. If you line up on the left, you're going to the left. That's insane. And on top of that, the fact that you, you have long developing routes all the time for, for what reason? Yeah. For what reason? So you're, you're much better, not to interrupt, but you're much better at reading the comments and speaking all at once, right? But one of them just stood out to me. Our man Jack Fritz is on, watching the IG Live, Fritz. doing hashtag Fritz was right. And listen, listen, oh, man. Let me take How, It's hard to say Fritz was right, you know? Jack Fritz is a punk millennial that caught out of his job today because he had the sniffles. This young punk Thundercat has no rhyme or reason to come tell us Elder Statesman who has faith and belief in our teams that he was right about anything. You stick to baseball, Jack. As a matter of fact, don't let me call your boss and tell him that you're hanging out in IG Lives talking trash when you're supposed to have the sniffles. Go huddle up with your son and, and stop in here with grown men talking trash, Jack Fritz. Ain't nobody listening to you. And yes, you were right, but we don't care. We don't care, Jack Fritz. We don't care. <laughs> Things like that irk me so bad when I said I got to listen to certain people in my life to tell me that they were I, right. But I just wish I had the drop board. <laughs> like, no one cares. Nobody cares. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so, uh, oh, man. Uh, the, the offense, again, the next gen stats show that. You know what else I saw that one of the most astounding stats I've ever seen in my life that makes me sick? Right now, we're 31st in every defensive category in the last like six games. We're the worst in the entire league. And the Cardinals had th 32 first downs in an NFL game against us. Eight a quarter. And they only had three third downs completed. Wow. What de defense? What, where's Matt Patricia? Where, <laughs> like, 
32 first downs? And also, Fr Fr Fritzy, um, feel free. Hey, listen, I, I, I've I got control of the camera here. Feel free to jump on. Feel free to jump on and defend your the, – tell the people. Tell the people why Jack Fritz was right. You ain't got you ain't doing nothing. You you you, you got the sniffles. You're home. You sniffles. You're watching this. Go ahead. I'll I'll, I'll watch for it. I'll, I'll pop it on. I'll pop you on. But you got to tell the people what exactly you were right about here. So, while he's thinking about doing that, I will say this too. I'm mad at Howie Roseman for hiring these coordinators. I know when you when you go to Super Bowl, you lose coordinators. You lose them and things happen, but this is the second time in a brief span that I'm living a, a groundhog nightmare. Mm. The, is the Frank Wright was the okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The the players were revolting against the coach. I mean, like you could write you could just look back at 2020 and these are the same things going on, and it shouldn't be for an eleven win team. And Howie, you know, we we talked about this earlier. We applaud the, the pick. But it's like you went from not knowing how to pick anybody to I'm going to pick SEC champion guys so nobody can say anything to me. Mm. And some of these guys aren't panning out yet. They're young. I'm going to give them time because especially on the defensive line, all the time in the world. But Howie Roseman, nobody wanted to hire Doug Peterson. Nobody else interviewed him. Nobody else was looking to talk to Nick Sirianni. I, these aren't offensive minds that are coming out. Like a Mike McDaniel who three people wanted to want, who wanted him. You know, Shanahan and people were fighting to get him. Like, McVeigh, the McVeigh tree. Now, he was young, super young. But, I mean, I want somebody, not saying that Nick should be fired, but going forward, I want someone from a tree that has shown that they're a part of that system and growing up in that system. The fact that I didn't know anything about Nick Sirianni was weird to me. The fact that I had to look him up and find out who he was in the NFL, I watch almost every game of football. I know who coordinators are. Mm -hmm. So when I get a guy that I don't know who he is, like, I knew Doug Peterson because he played with the Eagles. And I, I'm looking up his thing. I'm like, oh, this guy was in high school with a clipboard. And now he's sitting on the sideline with Andy Reid, and I think that he's doing something with Andy Reid. Like, it's Andy Reid. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's weird to me because, and I'll say the last thing about Howie, and I'm let it go. Howie had to deal with Andy, who controlled everything. Then Chip came in and put him in the broom closet. And he got out of that broom closet, and he said, never again. And now I've got these coaches that are, emotionally stable and give out ice cream and water flowers. But when things start going bad, they're in these press conferences with no answers. When you tell me you took a shot at AJ Brown because you were hoping for a PI, who allowed you or what made you think that you could say that out loud to a Philadelphia audience or anyone listening to you? You were hoping for a PI when you got AJ Brown. There are many other plays to call. There are many other things you could have hoped to happen. You shouldn't say certain things that you're saying. And it shows me that, Again, when you say scripted, they're doing very well. They're walking down the field on people. And whether they come up with a touchdown or not, certain things happen, but they are moving the ball. But when pressure buzz pipes and people adjust to you, we have no counter back on their adjustments right now. 100%, which goes back to the entire coaching thing and why it works so well with the 15 first scripted plays or, or in the first quarter, and then all of a sudden the wheels kind of fall off of the whole thing. It's it, 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 there's there's the lack of creativity. It's the defenses like they're watching the film. They just know, they know the routes. It just dominated the next gen stack conversation. I didn't even know that. Yeah. And you're out here spitting knowledge like you know. Oh oh now I know what the what the offense is is doing. And you're you're so you're at the games. I'm gonna ask you an honest yeah. question. You, I I haven't gone to games in a long time. But when you're at the game, you get a feel for the game. Can you not tell me that there's certain moments where you look at whoever you're sitting next to and know what they're going to run? You just know it? Yeah. 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 You, 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 got, you get a pretty good, a pretty good feeling. Speaking of, speaking of being at the games, and, and, you know, it is a humble brag, but I got to do it. I, I was fortunate enough to sit, like, right behind the Eagles bench, first row. And when I'm, when I'm at the games, and this is, this is just a, a, a product of social media, I'm watching the game. I'm looking at the game. I'm watching the game. That's fine. But I'm also scanning. I'm constantly scanning because the best viral shit that I've ever put out is, you know, this fan arguing with this fan over here or this guy's got a goofy sign or this guy's, you know, dressed up in something or he's doing something silly. That's always the best stuff. So I was excited and I wasn't posting much on game day because I was just watching the Eagles sideline. And you, you, you couldn't hear, right? But you were close enough to, like, read lips 
and kind of sense the vibe. And, and, and I, and I want to, my feet are usually on the other side of the field. I'm usually on the visitor's side. So I can't really get a good grasp of what's happening on the home bench. I was right up against it. Yeah. And to my disappointment, no juice. No juice. No real camaraderie. Slay was chopping it up and laughing and keeping people loose. But other than that, dudes kind of, kind of kept to themselves. There wasn't a lot of, like, coaches going around with the iPads. And there was some of that, but it wasn't like all the, the – you ever see, like, during a broadcast, like, the positional groups get huddled up and the coaches, you know, whatever positional coaches got them, all right, dialed in to the, hey, this is what they're doing. This is how we're going to count it. This is what they're doing. You never see jail on the sideline with an iPad and talking to his coaches. You never see a lot of, you know, that you see it with the only time, the only time Jalen picks up an iPad, by the way, the only time he picks up an iPad is after he throws an interception. When he throws an interception, he has an iPad in his hand right after that and he looks at it. And the other time, you're right, it's almost like how Carson Wentz was. Carson Wentz, I never saw him on an iPad ever. Yeah. Ever. Like, you, see, you see the communication. Yes. And you also see other players hyping up other players. There was one time where I saw Jalen, and this is not a knock against Jalen. This is just an overall vibe of the team. Observation. He went down down the sideline once and and, and tried hyping up the defense. Like, listen, we need to stop here. So I'll give him all the credit. But that was the only time that I saw players trying to, like, encourage each other. Or it was just real weird. Like, the vibe has been off all season. And, again, they're not connecting. They're not having fun. They're gripping the bat too tight. And I feel so, like the, the, there's an overall distrust amongst each other and amongst the coaches. And that's just after this period of time, at this point in the season, you could just – I mean, A.J. Brown doesn't even want to talk to the media. Not that he doesn't have anything nice to say about to the media, but I guarantee you if he was to speak, he'd be like, this offensive game plan is bullshit. Nobody can stop me on a slant. You run one or two slants a game. It's like the Andy Reid with the run thing. He'll run, it'll work. He'll run, it'll work. He'll run, it'll work. And then he'll forget how to run. Slant, it, you can't stop it. it the stuff that it, they're unstoppable with of, outside of the tush push, they just forget to do it. And so I will, I'll circle back to that about coaching. When they lost to the 49ers the way they did, and the question again, I, I, I read body language, and I'm, I'm a good people person. When Nick Sirianni said, Oh, I didn't talk to the team after the game. I let the team talk to each other. Nah, bro. When you're out there winning and you're 10-1 and one and you're hooting and hollering on the sidelines and you're pumping it up with the fans and you're woot wooting and you get in there and you got game balls and you're victory speeching and you're whatever and you're doing all that bravado talking, my kid just got her ass kicked. I, I got a daughter, so I use her on my side. My daughter just got her ass kicked. I got to talk to her now, too. I got to come in and be the one to say, hey, you know what? We took this L. Here's a game ball to such and such, because at least you're out there blocking your ass off. We did one thing right. We got to do other things right. Like, you as the coach have to go in there and set that tone. And the fact that you let the players do it, I feel like that's when everything got lost in the fray. Because with players, without a, a, a head coach, without somebody on top, it's just like having kids. You got your daughter and your son. They're arguing. They're fighting. Let them figure it out. Yeah, okay, good luck with that. Let these kids go duke it out and see how quick that they figure out what's going on because they both got different attitudes and mindsets and where they come from. When you're the coach, you're the parent, you go in there and say, hey, everybody chill out. We got this. This is what we're going to do. But when you let them do it again amongst themselves and you don't go and I don't know what he did or not, but my mindset is as a head coach, you should have talked then. And then you should have went one-on-one, man-to-man and said, hey, bro, give me five minutes. How's your So let's fast forward a month from now. All right. So uh, let's fast forward because I, I don't I don't want to, you know, circle back around like, you know, yes, we support the team. Yes, we're allowed to criticize. Yes, we're allowed to be we frustrated. Did it enough. I, I just had to put it out there for us. We did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and, 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 and all that. If, so I don't want to fast forward prior to the Super Bowl because we're all going to have faith. How much of that faith we have is up to the individual fan, right? Yeah. So I'm going to fast forward a month and a half from now. Season's over one way or the other. What changes does this team need to make going into 2020? It's a, it's a happy new year. It's a new year. What changes would, does this team need to make in 2024 to get back to the team that they were in 2022? 
the, okay. So for me, the first thing that has to happen before you even get to what change need to be made is, I need Howie Roseman to talk to everyone who has more than a one-year contract and find out what they believe in Nick Sirianni or what they don't believe in Nick Sirianni. And just, hey, hey, you're already here, bro. You're under contract. You're not going anywhere. I need the temperature on what your mindset is on him as a leader. Because again, I don't, I'm not in the locker room and I don't know, but I, I feel like there's fraction and, and, there, and there's discontent. So if, let's just say, because you're not going to fire Nick, right? Three years in a row in the playoffs, you're going to keep Nick. You talk to the guys, there's enough guys to say, we believe in Nick, we support Nick, he can get it back. So you keep Nick, right? After that, again, you better go to the McVeigh tree. You better go, uh, shit, I, I hate because they're the enemy right now. Go to the, the Shanahan tree. Go to someone who is an, a young offensive mind and not only bring them in and pay them well, but pay them well with an eye towards the future. If the offense turns around and Nick Sirianni is amendable to them being where they are, great. I'll tell you one thing, E, if he turns the offense around and they're here in two years and they want to go leave, I'm sorry, Nick, you got to go. I'm going to keep the young kid who turned the team around. Because going forward, all we're doing is losing coordinators. Yeah. On, def on, on defense, Bring me back one of the old guys. Find me an old guy that doesn't want to be a head coach anymore and doesn't have any dreams or aspirations. It's been beat out of him, but he knows how to get, how to build a, a defense. Or go get me, again, the enemy. Go get me ha Harris from the Cowboys who turned those DBs around even when Diggs got injured. I thought they were going to be smoked, and he kept those guys together through multiple injuries. Bring me in either an old grumpy guy that's not going nowhere or Harris on defense and i believe that with the coaching things will turn around the offense is set i don't care about another we could lose i i want kelsey to retire I, I i want him to retire i want him to be home with his family he's got his son on the way fourth child god mm -hmm. bless you bro i saw you barely take a trash can out of that documentary broke my heart i want you to leave we'll, we'll find another lineman for you or, or another lineman other than that the offense is set just make, give me a linebacker you know drop for trot, whatever you want to hashtag it, you know, get me a, a, a legit linebacker. And then let some of these young guys who I believe can actually do something in the quarterback position. You, you keep slay, you do something with Bradbury, and then you see what these young guys, and you draft a couple of guys, try to fill in. But the coaching has to change dramatically. And if you can get one of these young guys from one of these other teams on offense who yeah. knows what emotion is, I'd be happy. That's a start. I agree. If I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, and I can't believe I'm saying this out loud, I'm going to take a page out of the Dallas Cowboys playbook be, be, because McCarthy is a boo. And I'm not saying that Nick Sirianni is, but some head coaches are better managing the game and staying the hell out of any sort of play calling. Let us not forget, I mean, people are like Sirianni needs to take control of play calling. Uh, no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't, because the first eight games of that Sirianni Hurts era was some of the worst Eagles football and some of the sloppiest non-football IQ, which is a core value. I mean, it was terrible. It was terrible football. Yeah. Nick is better being the figurehead and managing the game. That's what he's good at, okay? You got, Mike, uh, you got McCarthy down there, and so what do you do? You get yourself a grizzly – not old, but kind of old, veteran, used to be a head coach, defensive coordinator. Yep. And he turned that defense around. That's what I want. Now, on offense, you had, what, Kellen Moore, right? Yep. Who was a moron, yep. right? You got rid of him, and you bring in another offensive coordinator, okay? So all of a sudden, these coordinators are making the Cowboys look good, and McCarthy can just sit there and – being a head coach. So, so I think offense, right though. off the bat. This is McCarthy's right. offense, though, and McCarthy is in control of this offense. He is calling the plays again this year, and to his credit, he was not great to start either. He was making bad mistakes, and a player called him out. C.D. Lamb said, yo, bro, I'm a number one wide receiver. And after that, what happened? He's in the slot on the right. He's in the slot on the left. He's out in the wide. He's in motion. And next thing I know, this guy's getting 12 balls a game because he called his coach out and said, what are you doing? Yeah. Because McCarthy started the year off, like you said, how he how he's a boob. He tried to run the ball and minimize Dak. 
Yeah. No, I, 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 I understand what you mean by McCarthy's call the plays and, and, and it's his offense. The point I'm trying, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to focus on making is bad coordinators can spoil the Yes. Yeah. And that's what I think that we have right now. We just have bad coordinators. And so if you bring in, and may, maybe Matt Patricia's the guy, maybe not. I don't know. But all what I'm trying to focus on is the offensive side of the ball. A veteran play caller that is experienced calling plays where, listen, even though it's a collaborative effort for those first 15, that guy's going to, you know, he's going to adjust and take control of the offense. That's what I'm trying to say. Like McCarthy's calling the, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. What I'm, I got, the, the, you, you, the, want, you want a veteran guy on offense. I want a veteran guy on offense and a veteran guy on defense. Patricia might be that guy. He just he might be lacking with, you know, have a lack of overall talent. So I think the coordinators, the, that's got to be locked down. So Nick can just be Nick. And secondly, I, I know this, it's been devalued for, it feels like centuries at this point. But get yourself some linebackers. Stop ignoring it. The linebackers are to the 2010s and the 2020s what wide receivers were to the 2000 Philadelphia Eagles, which is we know this is an issue. We know there's a lack of talent. We know it keeps biting us in the ass, and we still invest nothing into it. To question, who, who are the two teams right now in the league that you'd want to be if you were a franchise? Who are the two teams right now if you were just like, I want to be like them? What, what are the two teams? I mean, you got you got to look at Baltimore. Yep. Right. And do I say Frisco? Yep. And what do they got? Not only do they have linebackers, they have lions at linebacker. Yeah. So their 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 head guy runs the defense. He's a hard hitter. They don't play around. They don't play games. The Ravens have lived with just having good linebacker play, and it's kept them relevant other than when they don't have a quarterback through injury, it has kept the Steelers to never having a losing season with the, uh, uh, Tomlin yeah. because he values linebackers and line. We value line, but not the linebackers. If you've got the line and the linebackers, that really does help your cornerbacks. When the, li when the, when the line's great, it helps our DBs tremendously. But when they, they can't hunt and they're getting pushed around and your secondary isn't there and nobody can cover or do anything, you are, you see it. The league gets crushed. The, the yeah. Cowboys, when they're, they're, their linebackers went down, now everybody's throwing over the middle of them, and now every game's a shootout. Yeah. The, the Bills, they lost their two linebackers. The guys are healthy now. Oh, wow, the Bills are playing better now. <laughs> they're another team on defense that needs defensive line and linebackers. And cornerbacks are a dime a dozen. Because you know why? You're not allowed to touch anybody anymore. You literally, your job is to stay there and hope to be around. So you need linebackers to cover over the middle, to blitz, to get pressure, and that's what we need to focus on because that's how the 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 bullies play, and we want to be bullies. The the Dolphins went out there against the Ravens. The last two times they played the Ravens, the Ravens put up fifty nine points on them. You know why? Because they're a finesse team. I don't care how good you are. I don't care how fast Tyreek Hill is. You go over the middle around here, bro, bro. You get lit up. It's yeah. a different ball game. Yeah. So. We need linebackers. So, assistant coaches, coordinators, linebackers, safety. And I, th I think if you go into 2024 addressing that and focusing on that, again, I'll stay just to tie a bow on it. We knew the issues about this team in training camp. And, and, and honestly, like in hindsight, I'm acting surprised. In hindsight, I shouldn't be surprised whatsoever because we knew about the rookie coordinators. We knew about the lack of linebacker depth. We knew about issues of safety. We knew the corners were getting a little older. We knew. We, we knew. We, we, knew. Al we also, because I, I mean, you did the show before the season started, and the one thing we both talked about, I, I brought up the rookie wall. And we were thinking like, oh, you know, they play deep. They're going to bowl games. Yeah. That's not going to be an issue. But we did also both say having two young guys in the middle anchoring your defense late in the season, they're going to fumble. They're going to stumble. And they are sure. because that's just what happens in the NFL. Welcome to the NFL. You know, Davis is his second year, but he's also just a big man that, you know, Thanksgiving comes, your mom's making turkey, mashed potatoes. He has on a couple of extra pounds late in the season. And it's harder for them to get going. So we, you're right. We did see this. We said those things. And even though, again, it looked great on paper and you wish the best of everything, there are certain things that just happen in the NFL. 
welcome to the NFL is real. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Getting yeah. getting baptized and learning like, okay, well, now it's December and you've got to push. Yeah. When people find out how good you are, yeah, they're showing plays about Davis got washed on the double team. I'm like, yeah, and that's why Fletcher Cox is now resurgent and getting sacked again. Because when he made $100 million and everybody's like, Fletcher sucked. He got paid. Now he doesn't. I'm like, he got paid, and now he's getting double and triple teamed. Yeah. Carter and Davis are getting double teamed. That means the other guys have to get home. So you're right. Rabbit in a bow. We saw it all. We're living it. I'm so sad. But I love you so much. And, I, you know, we got the same barber. Yeah. We got the same sense of humor. And uh, we gonna we gonna make it. I, I I tell you what I I appreciate the leaders on the team because Kelsey was visibly frustrated. Yeah. I actually love that AJ Brown didn't say anything because by him not saying anything, it showed that he feels how I feel. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then you got Brandon Graham with all the euphemisms and the positivity of trying to bring people together. So you know I I, I just want this team to get it together late because at least on offense they've got all the tools and we went and beat tom brady with malcolm jenkins and fletcher cox on the team and that's all we really had in brandon Graham. we had like three dudes that we was relying on on defense and everybody else was just out there so strange things can happen right we could dream i Black Gritty, I appreciate all the time. We've, we've been at it for close to an hour. I'm sure we could go another three hours if, if, if they let us, but we both got families to get to. We do. Any final thoughts? Go birds. Please go birds. <laughs> go, go. I don't want to have to live like this. I, I don't want to have to hide from the people. <laughs> I want to be able to go outside again, E. I like being in these streets, but I'm ducking. Yeah. That's my last word. We got, we got to fix it. We got to fix it. My, 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 my final thought will be, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll circle it right back around to how this conversation started, which is, this fan base is so passionate and so ravenous about their Philadelphia Eagles that this sort of stuff affects our lives, right? So everybody on here. Who's commentating? By the way, I I I, I blocked the Forty ers guy. We don't ever got to worry about the Forty ers guy. I got him out of here real quick. See you, pal. But all the people commenting, all the people, I, I I mean, how many of us? The game was over, and we listened to the post game show, or watched watched watch Eagles post game live, or this or, or the following morning, you know, we 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 die, we listened to the radio because we wanted to hear the thought like. We're glutton for punishment in a way. Yeah. You, you, you know what I mean? So everybody is frustrated. Everybody wants to see this team do well. Everybody's still rooting for this team. Everybody believes. Everybody wants to support them. We don't want to boo. We want to yeah. high five and cheer and have a great time. That's why we keep showing up. And that's and that's and that's why we're so hard on them sometimes. But we all still believe. We're all hoping for the best. They have it's their responsibility to give us something to believe in. Yep. That's my final thought. All my show notes were in green. I mean, you can't read any of it because a lot of it's scribbly faces and doodles because I was frustrated. Yo, wait, 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 did Charlie Kelly write that? Charlie Kelly write that? Right. So I mean, I, you know, we like I said, we bleed it, and it, it is what it is. We're doing we're doing our best to stay true. And, uh, you know, rest everybody, Nick. I don't know if you're watching. I don't know if you're in here. But rest everybody. Get me that fake bye week, and let's go out there and shock the world. You know what I mean? Let's go, let's go do the rope-a-dope in the playoffs and make something happen. Black Gritty, I appreciate your time. I wish you a happy new year. Nothing but success and happiness and prosperity in 2024. Let us all be gajillionaires and win nine Super Bowls this season. <laughs> I love it. And with that, go Birds. No birds.